Nicolas Berggrün. Ähm, wir freuen uns sehr, dass Sie heute hier sind. Ähm, er ist Gründer des Berggrün Institute on Governance, äh, das führende Persönlichkeiten aus Weltpolitik, Wirtschaft und Zivilgesellschaft zusammenbringt, äh, um über Europa nachzudenken, um über die USA nachzudenken, um über Welt Weltpolitik nachzudenken. Ähm, und er ist auch Autor des Buches Intelligent Governance for the 21st Century, A Middle Way Between West and East. Ähm, das ist die deutsche Version, die in den letzten Tagen ähm, herausgekommen ist. Sehr schön. I will just very, very briefly um, uh, outline what, what, our, um, what, what the center of the, uh, of the book that we will uh, discuss today um, is. So Mr. Becker, in, in, in your book, um, you describe how uh, globalization 2.0 um, is transforming the world from US-led globalization to a multipolar world that show that there are, there are alternatives to uh, Western liberal democracies. There is not an end of history, but actually just the beginning of uh, a global competition between governing systems. Some are more successful than others though, uh, in particular China with its meritocratic modern mandarinate, as you dub it. Um, on the other hand, uh, the United States and the particularly California um, the ninth largest economy in the world uh, suffers currently from a, some kind of democratic deadlock. Um, the US, you say, is ruled by some kind of populist, short-term, special interest, um, consuming political culture that does not allow any strategic political investment in the future. Um, you say it must therefore adopt what you call um, intelligent governance, meaning um, some meaningful involvement of the citizens in matters of their competences, while at the same time fostering legitimacy and consent uh, for delegated authority at higher levels um, of complexity. Now this, just being a very, very brief introduction into the book um, that we're talking about today, I would like to... First of all, many thanks. Um, I, I feel honored to be here. I understand this is the uh, oldest surviving AG in Switzerland. Uh, so uh, let's see if, um, I mean, Switzerland, what well, we'll talk about it, but Switzerland, I think, has done an extraordinary job at actually creating a system that seems to function. And um, I suppose this is um, a functioning part of it. So the fact that it's, what, 250 years old um, is, um, uh, you know, let's say, gives us some hope. And um, and I really appreciate that I can be here with you. So uh, thank you for, thank you for letting me uh, uh, speak with you. That we are in an environment today where political systems um, really are giving each other competition. We're no longer in a unipolar world where you have you know, Western uh, liberal democracy as being the only system, dominant system, and where you have one dominant country, the US. The, the question that started sort of the Institute uh, from an intellectual standpoint is let's compare different systems um, and let's compare the extremes, East and West. So the US is open, transparent, uh, elections determine everything, uh, the competition is populist um, and, um, and individuals have rights. Um, it's a very dynamic environment, but today you've got two parties that are pretty much legislated as being the only two parties uh, that can compete, that today block each other in terms of reforms and long-term uh, thinking. Uh, you look at China, the other end, China has been very successful for 30 years economically. Um, it has a model where it can think long-term, it can um, come up to consensus, it can uh, promote in terms of power the people who are the most capable um, and it can also implement ideas, you know, government decisions. On the other hand, it, has, it gives no transparency, no accountability, no participation to citizens, doesn't protect citizens against the state and the party, so it has all the deficiencies that are maybe some of the assets of the West. So we've taken the two extremes, compared them and see if we can learn from each other and potentially 
is the tricky part, find some kind of balance between the two. And that's, in essence, the premise of the book. So I think it's important to look at what's going on. Who can learn what from whom? And I would argue that Switzerland is good when it comes to stability, to social security, when it comes to labor markets, when it comes to management in general. But it's very difficult to transform it in different cultures or different, different <coughs> ground. So learning from each other is, for me, what I took out of the book. And there is no clear answer. But we must acknowledge we live in a globalized world where things are changing rapidly. And of course, it's no longer the Cold War. It's no longer the, 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 the bipolar uh, worldview. We have to deal with situations that can nearly on a daily basis change. I, not a question of modesty, but um, I do think that uh, you know, since you're around the world and pretty much every country in the world that you're going to encounter, uh, as you say, many of them are going to be corrupt. Many of them are ha facing challenges. China is facing challenges. You know, your neighbors in Europe are facing challenges. And obviously, a any other country and from South America to Africa to Southeast Asia, uh, we talked about some of them. I mean, you have so much knowledge and experience here. I, I would, in a friendly way, not say we in and we do it be better or anything. I wouldn't do it like that. I would just engage because they can learn a lot from you. If you help them, you, you, I mean, if you give them your knowledge, your, your experience, you're going to help them. Uh, that's the greatest thing that Switzerland can do for the world. Um, and uh, I think it's, it's almost a duty. We als Modell ihnen kann to take democracy to the next level. Wir haben ihnen ein Plakat gekauft, äh, womit für das Frau Frauenstimmrecht Werbung gemacht wurde und möchten ihnen das dann herzlich übergeben. Wir würden uns freuen, wenn es einen schönen Platz äh, bei Ihnen gibt. <lacht>